I'm back. And my dogs are making noise. Rocky, I'm trying to make a vlog here. Help me out. Let's try this again. Hi everyone. Um, you might notice that my voice is a little bit strange, <laughs> although it's a lot better than it was a few weeks ago. Would you believe I finally got the dreaded COVID? Yes. And I'm pretty sure I got it on the flight coming back from the f concert I did a while back in Florida. The irony of that is that that was the concert with the symphony that I canceled right before lockdown and wouldn't you know, I go to do it, and then I get COVID. Ah, yeah, finally got me. I, first I was just losing my voice, and then I felt a little funny in my upper chest, and I thought, oh, I'm starting to feel like a chest cold. And honestly, it's been so long since I've had a cold or any kind of illness that I, it was uh, surprising. And I got pretty sick. I got a really bad chest cold and head cold then after that. Uh, a couple of those days were not fun, but then I turned the corner and I'm feeling 100% better, although I'm still sounding froggy because I'm still coughing a little bit. And, all, and, that, and a few weeks ago, I had no voice. The coughing just completely took my voice away, which is why I'm so glad that I had made, I, in fact, I made the decision a few months back to move the uh, the show at the Nico uh, venue in San Francisco, I had called up my agent, oh, you know, about a month and a half before that actual gig, and I said, you know what? Can we move that one? I really will be just getting back from the Florida gig, and I don't really want to go out there for that time frame. Can we move it to later in the year? And they managed to do that for me, and thank God we did, because I would have been canceled again anyway, because I would have had no voice, and it would have been a last minute cancellation. I might even have flown out there and found out while I was out there that I couldn't sing because I literally started getting sick three days after. And I would have been flying on the fourth day, I think, the, from the, after the fourth day after I got home. I don't know, something like that. I would have been there, and that would have been awful. So, And I also, you know, I don't like to do a lot of concerts in the summer, so I told Dave, don't, you know, don't book me anything. And thank God, because it's going to take me a few more weeks, I think, to get even my my singing voice back to normal I and mean, I can't talk normally yet so <sighs> anyway I'm feeling a lot better so the purpose of this vlog is that I finally made it to the first tour show of the season it was again up at hits um, my trainer wasn't gonna show because she just moved barns and she's just finishing up now moving houses they bought a house so she wasn't bringing any of her horses, and no one else at the barn wanted to go to it, so I ended up the only one signing up, although she did come up and coach me and help me at the show, and also my friend Donna came up. It was meant to be a two-day show, and I signed up for both days. And wouldn't you know, just weather-wise, it's been so cool and perfect leading up to it, and the two days of the show, the Saturday and Sunday, record heat. <laughs> Come on, in the 90s, mid to high 90s, I mean, just insane. And then cooler, it's going to be cooler again, you know, starting tomorrow, because today is actually the Sunday, and I would have been showing today, but I decided no, because both days I was, I had one of my tests right at the hottest part of the day, and I just didn't want to do that to him. But uh, it all it all worked out really well, because I went up there the day before, it was still nice and cool. Morning, Eddie. Good morning, buddy. I had to give Max a bath, and it's not warm yet. It's supposed to get warm, but... Yeah, you need a bath. You got so muddy yesterday. Alright, this is a fad. 
I think I need to go get some coffee. All right, it's time to load up. He's not been out grazing, drying off from his bath. Getting some grass before we go in the trailer. But now it's time. You ready, bud? Nope. Dragged all my stuff into my, I had two stalls that I had bought. So I had my tax stall area. A lot of stuff with me. I'm, I'm prepared now. Now I'm a pro. I know what to bring. Um, set up my old stall. Set up his stall did a practice ride and he was pretty wired in fact at one point he put his head down like and was gonna go to buck and fortunately he behaved and I pulled him back out of it he was pretty fresh that first day our first day out showing and all I could think was oh my what are you gonna be like tomorrow and I could only ride in the practice tests rings you know a little bit and there was always people in there at least three people besides me each time I was in both of my rings trying them so I couldn't really ride the, the complete test we managed to get through that day. Maxi! Maxi! Good boy! Stayed with him till fairly late in the evening. And Set up. 
arrival set up and practice. And it was pretty frisky. Uh, and there were a lot of horses in the ring, so I couldn't really go through the tests. I did little pieces of them, pieces all over the place. It's not like at home, so it could be really interesting. Max, why can't it be 70 and dry and slight breeze? Perfect. Huh? And then went to my hotel and then came back for the Saturday show. And I had planned on two shows, uh, two tests because I wanted the one I did last year was training level three. That's when we made it to the regional finals in. And even though I hadn't been doing the test much, I thought let's do that first just to get him in the ring again get him used to it so we did that at 11 40. He really is. And he did really well. He actually came fourth, which is surprising because you know, I haven't done that. Um, he ate very well. And then the next one was going to be at 2.38, which is when it was so hot. So I brought him out again, and we warmed up. And I tried to keep it to a minimum, just do enough to hopefully you know, get us through this test. And to be honest, all while driving up there, I kept thinking, mm, I think you're jumping the gun here. I really don't think he's ready. He didn't even know how to do this test a month and a half ago, really, because it has a lot more complicated stuff in it, for him anyway. It's level one, test three, which is the third test, the hardest test of the three. For level one, it has counter canter loops in it. It has stride lengthenings, trot and canter lengthenings, for you horse people who know what that is. Um, 10 meters trot circles. Um, anyway, we had been doing the test at home. I had been practicing with him, which I'll show you some of those clips right now.
And also uh, some weeks back when I went to Minnesota for my nephew's wedding, I brought all my horses over to my trainer's barn and she rode Max for me during that time and, and really worked on his, his counter canter. So I'll show you now. <laughs> but because she's been moving barns and I haven't been wanting to have lessons and bother her she's got so much on her plate as it was leading up to the show that I was just sort of working on my own and wasn't doing lessons but she came over to my place um, three days three days before the show and I was very happy and actually surprised that he had he'd progressed enough that he could actually do the test he actually did it pretty well but that's at home and that's with you know the proper warm-up and going through the test a few times and when I got to the show and he was so like looky and spooking at things he wouldn't normally spook at and then he almost jumped out of the dressage ring that I was practicing in the day before and I thought oh my what have I gotten myself in for I'm gonna be embarrassed Um, so I didn't sleep too much the night before the show because I really thought it was premature. And, I, and going in, I really only had three goals. One was to not lose my stirrups because during stride lengthenings, I sometimes can. And to not jump out of the ring and to not forget the pattern. And what did I do? I forgot the pattern. But the exciting thing is, even though I forgot, I forgot my 15 meter canter circle after you come out of the loop uh he still got a 64 point something something i can't fix 64.7 something and that's with a mandatory two points off so he would have gotten a 66.7 points when we would have come in fifth in our very first attempt <laughs> that blew me away and in fact we we got a qual even with the two points off we still got a qualifying score uh for um the regional finals, you know, the regional championship like we went to last year, we were half, we're, we only need two scores over 62%. So we're halfway there already in our very first show. So I'm thrilled. It's exciting. I think this test is actually going to be really good for him once we really work on it more and um, get his fitness up so we can handle the heat. It, it, it's just the heat takes it out of him. And,
I had a really nice judge in the second one. He's very smiley. In fact, I didn't know it was him. I saw him in the cafeteria earlier when we were buying lunch before my second test. I just saw him standing there buying his food and turned around and saw the three of us standing there and he's so smiley and we're, I smiled and waved back. I thought, oh, that's a friendly guy. Sure enough, that was my judge. Uh, so the fact that I screwed up my pattern, I didn't feel so bad because at least he was smiling and he, he even said sorry. <laughs> And I didn't even know what to do. I said, do I do the whole canter thing again? He said, no, just do the 15 meter and then continue on. I see you have to do a circle 15 meter. Hey, you live, you learn. And the funny part of it is, Max remembered the test because as we came off the canter loop, came into the corner, and where he would have started his 15 meter circle, I was trying to push him into the corner, and he was kind of fighting me a little bit, and of course now I know why. He, he, he's actually smart about the pattern. He learns them really fast. Rocky. Um, <laughs> I should listen to him. <sighs> yeah, gray souls. Oh well, can't beat myself up too much. My first time doing it, and like I always say, it's like learning a new song. I could rehearse it and rehearse it and rehearse it at home and know it cold, but until I've done it in front of audiences, uh, I, I don't know that I know the lyrics because your brain just functions differently on adrenaline, and of course I had adrenaline, so I forgot the pattern, but I'm not gonna forget it again next time. You heard it here, folks. anxious to get home. We're about 11 miles, well, 18 miles from home. I feel like a wet, soggy noodle after sweating. <laughs> ah, but I'm happy. I'm really happy, actually. I'm very proud of him. Since we've had a whole winter off and it's only his second season showing, so I didn't came forth even though Courtney actually thought 
we should have had a little higher score than we did. I was pretty happy. I, I thought he behaved well. And, and then for the, the new one, I was really <laughs> nervous to go in there because I just kept thinking, oh, Linda, you're jumping the gun here. You're not ready for this one. And even though he's kind of kind of does the test at home, it's at home. And you barely, you're barely getting through this test, really. You know, I haven't been doing it that long. And of course I screwed up. I went off pattern again. I'm so mad at myself because we actually, actually ended up doing it really well, even though it was very hot and tired by that point. Really tired, and that's what makes uh, certain things harder. Um, he would have gotten higher marks on certain things if, you know, his back end, he's just getting tired. You gotta push and use your back and, and that heat and for a second test. Um, but, you know, I had three goals going in. One was to stay in the ring literally, because he almost jumped out of it during the practice the day before. The second was to not lose my stirrups, because when I do these lengthening trots and these lengthening canters, sometimes I lose my stirrups. And then my third goal was not to go, not to forget, not to forget the pattern, of course. <laughs> Did the other two, but I forgot the pattern. Kept my stirrups, I stayed in the ring, and I forgot the freaking pattern. And that's just a mandatory two points off, and if we hadn't done that, we would have come fifth, and I, that's amazing to me. I became seventh as a result, but we would have been fifth. So I was really happy. I <laughs> again, I didn't even think we'd. I was almost afraid to go in there, thinking, oh, I don't know if we can do this one, because the ring seems awfully small when you barely know a test. But he did it. I'm so proud of him. Now we just have to get fitter stronger, fitter, more endurance so that he can handle the heat. So, very excited. So there you have it. I know it's boring for the non-horsey people, although some non-horsey people like to watch this kind of stuff. And uh, maybe it's even boring for some other horsey people because we're still not at a very high level, but hey, we're moving up the levels. That's all that matters. Taking it nice and slow, but hey, I'm having a ball doing something I've always wanted to do. And you know what, folks? My philosophy right now, with the way the world is, it's pretty messed up. There's a lot of crappy people in the world. There's a lot of crappy pe crappy people here in America, and there's a lot of crappy people outside of America. There's UFOs now flying around in the sky that are recognized UFOs. The climate, it just keeps getting hotter and hotter. So you know what? If you at all are in a position to maybe take a little less time doing the things you don't want to do and a little more time doing the things you want to do, I say do it now because you never know about tomorrow. So that's what I'm doing. That's what I've always wanted to do, and I'm doing it. I recommend you do the same if you can.